Hey guys, um, not entirely sure what happened there. For some reason, my computer just decided it was going to stop recording me. Um, so let's just pick up where we left off. All right, so the division problem is done. Like we've, we've done everything that we need to do here. So now we just need to write our answer. Uh, so 16 went into 115 seven times. We can see that right here on our big seven problem. So seven. And then this number down here at the bottom, that number is what we had left over. So we excuse me, we call that number the remainder. So our answer to the division problem is seven remainder three. So the answer to this division problem is going to help us label our answer over here correctly. So since 16 ounces went into 115 ounces seven whole times, that means our seven represents our number of pounds. So if I was to take 115 ounces and repeatedly subtract 16 ounces, I would be able to do that seven whole times, seven whole times, because then that would take me down to 112, okay? And then I would end up with these three ounces left over, and three ounces are not big enough to make another pound, so I've got three ounces left over, okay? So 115 ounces is equivalent to seven pounds and three ounces. And that's actually um, about the size of a healthy newborn baby. All right, guys, let's go ahead and look at number four. So example number four, George and his family drank three and a half gallons of milk each month. How many quarts of milk is this? All right, so for number four, uh, we are starting with our three and a half gallons. So three and a half gallons of milk. And it's asking us how many quarts that is. So we're going to convert those to quarts, okay? So we're going to take our three and a half gallons and we're going to convert that into quarts. All right, guys, so this is where we need to go find our conversion rate. Sorry, I was just making sure I'm still recording. <laughs> All right, so we need to go find our conversion rate. So for gallons and quarts, that's going to be in capacity. And it tells us that one gallon is equal to four quarts. Okay, so there's our conversion rate. One gallon is equal to four quarts. All right, one gallon is equal to four quarts. Okay, so from here, uh, we need to determine if we are going big to small or small to big. So we've got three and a half gallons. Well, we know that four quarts is one gallon, right? So that actually tells us that a gallon must be pretty big. Because to make a gallon, I have to dump four quarts into that bucket just for that bucket to say that I've got one gallon. So what that means is we're going big to small, which means we're going to multiply, okay? Now, guys, I want you to listen to me carefully on this one. Yes, big to small means to multiply. But for number four, I don't really want you guys to multiply on this one. And the reason is I've not taught you how to multiply a mixed number times a whole number. Like I've not taught you how to do three and a half times four. You can't just do three times four and then one half times four. That's not how that works. Now, we could write three and a half as a decimal. And that would be 3.5. And then we can multiply that by four. But I've also not taught you how to do that either. Okay. So instead, there's actually another really easy way that we can get our answer here. We can do some very simple repeated addition. So we're going to do repeated addition. Okay. And here's what that's going to look like. We've got three whole gallons. And then we've got half of another gallon. Okay. So think about it. There's four quarts in one gallon. So write down a four. So that's four quarts for one gallon, but we had three gallons. So write down another four. That's now for two gallons. Write down another four, and that's for three gallons. So four plus four plus four, that's going to be for all three gallons. However, we still have half of a gallon left. So think about it. If four quarts is one whole gallon, how many quarts must there be in a half gallon? Well, half of four is two. So a half gallon is going to be equal to two. So look, we can just simply add all these numbers together. And guys, that'll tell us our number of quarts. So we've got four plus four plus four. That equals 12 plus two more. That equals 14. So simple as that. 
three and a half gallons is equal to 14 quarts, okay? So for right now, we're not gonna multiply with fractions and decimals because I've not taught you guys how to do that, but this repeated addition strategy is just as good, just as simple, and just as fast, okay? All right, guys, let's go ahead and flip over to the back side here. We're gonna do this page right here, and then we will be finished. And let me just make sure I'm still recording. Okay, yes, we're still recording. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and dive in and let's do number one. Uh, so this is very similar to the problem we started with. So we've got 58 inches. That is equal to blank feet and blank inches. All right, so let's start with our conversion rate. Our conversion rate is going to be on the... What are we doing? Inches and feet. That's going to be on the length section. And it tells us that one foot is equal to 12 inches. So that's our conversion rate. One foot is equal to 12 inches. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get our conversion rate on there. So now are we going big to small or small to big? So we're going from 58 inches to feet. Just focus on the feet part because there'll be some inches left over. We can talk about that later. Primarily, we're going from 58 inches to feet. Guys, that means we're going small to big. We know that inches are smaller than feet. So we're going small to big. And that means we are going to divide. So this is going to be a big seven division problem. So let's come over here and set that up. So we're going to take our 58 inches and we're going to divide that by 12 inches because think about it, we have 58 inches in all. So we're dividing by 12 inches because that's how many inches are in a foot. So we're essentially repeatedly subtracting this number because every time you subtract 12 inches, you're getting a foot, right? All right, so let's come over here off to the side and let's solve this. So we're going to do 12 times a number, and that needs to get us close to 58. Now, if you know your 12's multiplication facts really well, you probably already know what number we're going to multiply by. But let's say you don't know your multiplication facts really well. That's okay. That's why the big seven is a really good division strategy for us. So what we're going to say is 12 times 2. Why? Because that's an easy multiplication fact that everybody knows. So 12 times 2 is 48. So we're going to, or not 48, I'm sorry, 24. 24. So 12 times 2 is 24. So now we do 58 minus 24, and we are left with 34. Okay, so if I've got 34 inches right here, remember this is inches because I started with 58 inches. So that's 34 inches. So if I've got 34 inches, is that enough inches to make another foot? Can I take away 12 inches to make another foot? Absolutely. I can actually take away a couple of feet out of this. So let's do the same multiplication problem again. Let's do 12 times 2 again. So 12 times 2 gives us 24. So we subtract 24 and 34 minus 24 is 10. So now I've got 10 inches left over. So if I've got 10 inches left over, do you think I can pull another foot out of that? Can I pull another 12 inches out of that? No, I cannot. That means I'm done with the division problem. So let's get our answer to the division problem. So the answer comes from adding together these numbers that we multiplied by 12. So that was two and two, and two plus two is four. So our answer to the division problem is four, and we're going to have a remainder of 10. So remember, this number down here at the bottom, this is called your remainder. I know it's my remainder because it's less than the number that I was dividing by. So since 10 is less than 12, that means 10 is so small, I can't make another group of 12. I can't pull 12 more inches out of that because I don't have 12 inches. I only have 10 inches. So then what's going to be the answer to number one? 58 inches. That's going to be equal to four whole feet. But then I had some inches left over, right? I had some inches left over that weren't enough to make another foot. And that was 10 inches left over. So 58 inches is four feet and 10 inches. So this person is almost five feet tall. 
if they added two more inches, then they would be five feet tall. Okay. Let me just make sure we're still recording. Yes, we are. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on now to question number two. So question number two, we've got four and a half tons, and we want to convert that to pounds. So our conversion rate here, I'll go ahead and tell you, is going to be one ton equals 2,000 pounds. Our conversion rate is that one ton equals 2,000 pounds. So now, are we going big to small or small to big? Well, we know tons, that's what you use to measure the weight of like elephants or cars, pounds. That's what you would use to measure the weight of like your desk or an adult person, right? So that means we're going big to small. Tons are a lot bigger than pounds. I mean, it takes 2,000 pounds just to make a ton, right? So tons are pretty big. So we're going big to small. That means we're going to multiply, okay? So we're actually going to revisit our repeated addition strategy because four and a half, you could do four and a half times 2,000 or you could do 4.5 times 2,000, but I've not taught you how to multiply yet with fractions or decimals. But instead, we do know how to use repeated addition pretty easily, so let's do that. So 2,000 pounds is repeating itself four and a half times. So 2,000, write 2,000 pounds. That's four ton number one, but we had four of them. Remember, we've got four whole tons plus half of another ton. So 2,000 for ton number one, 2,000 again for ton number two, 2,000 again for ton number three, and then 2,000 again for ton number four. So that's all four tons represented right there with pounds and repeated addition. Now remember, we still have half of a ton left over that we still need to add. So if 2,000 pounds is one ton, how many pounds do you think are a half ton? Well, half of 2,000 is 1,000. So we're gonna write down 1,000 to represent our half ton. And then guys, to get our answer, all we have to do is add these together. So we're gonna count by twos or 2,000s. So that's 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000. Now add one more thousand. That's 9,000. So four and a half tons is 9,000 pounds. And believe it or not, that is still not the size of a full grown elephant. A full grown elephant would be even bigger than that. Okay. All right, guys, just a couple more. All right, number three. Let me make sure we're still recording. Looks like we are. All right, so number three. Adam bought five and a half pounds of raspberries. How many ounces of raspberries is this? All right, so we've got five and a half pounds of raspberries. So five and a half, there's that half again. And that was pounds. And they're asking us to convert that into ounces. So we're gonna convert our five and a half pounds into ounces. Let's start with our conversion rate. So for pounds and ounces, there's one pound that's equal to 16 ounces. So our conversion rate is one pound equals 16 ounces. Okay, and then from here, let's determine, are we going big to small or small to big? We're going from pounds to ounces. So pounds, that would be to you know weigh like an adult person, Ounces would be to weigh an iPhone or a newborn baby kitten or something like that. So that means we're going big to small. Big to small. And that means we are, of course, multiplying. So we're actually going to revisit our repeated addition strategy here. And the reason is that I've not taught you how to do five and a half times 16 or 5.5 times 16. And our repeated addition strategy, guys, it really is just as good. In my opinion, it's actually faster just to do it this way. And remember, the reason why we can do repeated addition is because that's the exact same thing as multiplication. So let's do that. So we've got five whole pounds 
and then half of another pound. So let's start with our five whole pounds. So there's 16 ounces in one pound. So that's 16 ounces for pound number one, 16 ounces for pound number two, 16 ounces for pound number three, 16 ounces for pound number four, and then 16 ounces for pound number five. So we've got five 16s up here. So that's 16 ounces for my five pounds. But then remember, we still have half of a pound left over. So if 16 ounces is one pound, cut that number in half. How many ounces are there in a half pound? Well, half of 16 would be eight, right? So there's eight ounces in a half pound. So what we're going to do here is do 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 8. Now, I don't know about you, but adding 16 that many times, that sounds a little confusing to me. So let's break this up into some multiplication and some addition. 16, as you can see, is repeating itself five times. So that's 16 times 5, and then we'll get our answer, and then we'll add 8 to that answer. So 6 times 5 is 30. I'm just making sure we're still recording. Okay. And then 5 times 1 is 5 plus 3 more is 8. So 16 times 5 is 80. That's 80 ounces in 5 pounds. However, remember, I still have these 8 ounces left for my half pound. So I have to add those 8 ounces and we end up with 88 ounces in all. Okay, so I'm telling you guys, that repeated addition strategy here, it's not bad. It's a really good strategy. Now, you might not use that strategy after I teach you how to multiply with mixed numbers and decimals, but you might like this strategy so much that you decide you want to keep on using it. That's up to you. All right, guys, last one we're going to do, number four. All right, it says Jackie combined, ooh, keyword, combined two buckets of water one held eight pints of water and the other held six quarts of water. How many pints of water does Jackie have in all? Keyword there, in all. Write this down. Remember, that means you're solving for the total. So that means we're either going to add or multiply. You're going to multiply if you see some keywords like each or every, or per, which means we're doing some repeated addition. However, we know it says Jackie combined the two buckets. So that must mean we're doing an addition problem, okay? Now, can we add eight pints to six quarts? You already know the answer is no. You cannot add pints and quarts together. Why? They're different sizes. A pint and a quart are not the same size. So we can't add parts together that are not the same size. So we're going to make them the same size and then we're going to add them together. Now look at the question carefully. You don't get to pick what the units are gonna be. The question actually tells us. It says how many pints of water does she have in all? That means all of our units need to be converted into pints. So one bucket, has eight pints of water, that one's good to go. The other one has six quarts of water. That one is not good. We need to convert those quarts into pints. So let's do that. So we're gonna take our six quarts and we're gonna convert those to pints. Remember, this is just step number one before we add all of our pints of water together. All right, so our conversion right here, this is gonna be under capacity and it tells us that one quart is equal to two pints. So one quart is equal to two pints. That is our conversion rate. One quart is equal to two pints, okay? And then from here, are we going big to small or small to big? If it takes two pints combined just to make a quart, that means a quart is bigger. So that means we're going big to small, which means we are multiplying. All right, so we've got six quarts, and we're gonna multiply that by two because there's two pints in every single quart. So two pints is repeating itself six times for all six quarts. So we know six times two is 12. So six quarts is equal to 12 pints. But hold on, we're not done. 
The question says, how many pints of water does she have in all? So you'll remember the first bucket of water had eight pints of water, so eight. The second bucket had six quarts, and we know six quarts is the same thing as 12 pints. So we add eight pints plus 12 pints, and we end up with 20 pints. So that would be the final answer. The final answer is that we've got 20 pints in all. All right, guys, so this is where we're going to stop with our math notes for today. Uh, make sure you are checking all of your Google Classrooms for your assignments. Make sure you complete the attendance form. And also, we are giving a big remote learning shout out to Tucker Price uh, because today is his birthday. So happy birthday, Tucker. And y'all have a good, safe weekend. And I will see you guys back on Monday. Okay, bye.